are you currently listening to? Welcome to After Hour Happy Hour. We are your chaotic but cathartic co-hosts. I am Jamila. I'm Vicky. I'm Sharon. So we thought about doing this maybe weekly, maybe bi-weekly. We haven't decided yet. But for us, we really like to share music amongst ourselves. We always do that in our group chat. So we thought it would be fun to share what we're currently listening to with anyone out there who's also into music or who's just into discovering new music. So just to kick off this session, we'll talk a little bit about our music taste as well as our music journey. So you get a little bit background and sense of what kind of music we listen to. I feel like my first type of music was very poppy. Like I I started like radio music because back when I first started listening to music, I didn't stream anything. I didn't have money to stream anything. And so I normally just listen to whatever was on the radio, things like Taylor Swift. I don't know what else is on the radio, but now it has kind of evolved into very alternative hip hop. R&B is my taste of music. I think I'm heavily influenced by Oakland because that's where I grew up and like people there listen to very R&B hip hop music and that has shaped my music taste now. So I think my journey with music has been very interesting. Growing up, same with me. I only listened to radio music because my mom's car didn't have an aux. So I just listened to whatever was coming out on the radio. And then in high school, I think I got into like the fangirl stuff when I started listening to Five Seconds of Summer. And then I went to college and I got super into EDM, which is weird because I really didn't like EDM at first. But how did you uh, originally describe EDM? pots and pans <laughs> and the then thing to me. I feel like 2019 was when I started getting into really chill music so artists like Chelsea Cutler, Sasha Sloan and this year I got really into k-pop and I'm starting to get into R&B so for me, I also listened to a lot of pop growing up, a lot of Disney Channel ones, like, you know, High School Musical, Hannah Montana, that type of stuff. And then I started listening to EDM when I was in middle school, 2010-ish. It was because my brother, who's a lot older than me, he got into EDM. So then he just influenced me. And I was like, oh, I like this genre of music. And the artist that really got me into EDM was Cascade. So I that was like my most listened to genre for, I mean, even now I still listen to it. And another genre that I really like is R&B. And like Sharon and Vicky, I've also gotten to K-pop. Like, go oh, deep we're in, in the hole. 10 feet pole. In the yeah. black hole. It's kind of embarrassing, if I'm being honest. No, I'm not, I'm not embarrassed at all. <laughs> <laughs> She's proud. <laughs> Mark, you hear that? She's proud. She loves you. <laughs> so, I'm super excited to start this series because I feel like the three of us can literally talk about music for hours or just share music with each other i think it's mainly because all three of us have similarities but also big differences in music so like in terms of like k-pop and like some american music we like overlap and we're like oh this is really good and then there's also music where we're just like "Eh, 10 seconds of it and we're out type of thing and so we can talk about that a lot yeah like me and sharon we have pretty similar edm tastes where we like have the same artists same songs but outside of EDM, it's pretty different. I would say even K-pop is pretty different. And then mm-hmm. me and Vicky, we have like similar like R&B vibes. But then maybe like hip-hop wise is a little bit different. I think I'm the most uneducated in music or I've been the most uneducated in music. So it was hard for me to like a lot of different things. So I was very picky, but I think I've gotten significantly better. And on top of that, I would just say Vicky's probably the most open to all types of music out of us three. So Mm -hmm. good for you, Vicky. Thanks. I just got ears, you know, that was dumb. Please cut that out. (laughs) So to get right into it, we're all going to each share one song that we sent to each other beforehand. We listened to it and now we're just going to give our opinions and how we like the song. Okay, disclaimer. So the year 2020, all three of us got into K-pop, as we mentioned. So for this intro episode, warning that all three of our songs are K-pop, just so you guys could get a feel for it. So let's get into it. 
But we promise further down the line, there will be more variety. It won't all just be K-pop music. And when we say K-pop, it's not K-pop boy band. It's a variety of Korean music too. There's no promises from me. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) So the song that I shared with them is called Find You by Monsta X because I've been on a GOT7 desert lately. So I've been getting to Monsta X. But usually I don't do deep dives into songs as Sharon and Vicky does. But for this one specifically, I did. But basically, the concept around the song was that they lost a member. And I, I didn't read fully into the lyrics, but one of the lyrics was just like, someday we'll meet again or someday I'll find you again. And that was really, really sad, right? But the most ironic thing is that a few days after that release, one of the members abruptly left the group. And it was because like he had a controversy or scandal. Like someone had allegations against him. And he decided that it was best for him to leave the group. And that person's like, that member is Wanho. And the saddest part is that they literally had like two performances or a few performances with him in it. And then as soon as he like announced his departure, the group had to continue promoting their songs without the group member. So you could see the performances. And there was like one particular performance, like right after the day that he announced his departure, like one of the members, he was not okay. Like he was like shaking during performance and it was just so sad. And then, so he basically disappeared, I think from like November until May when he finally came back as a solo artist. But in that period in between, I guess fans found that the members were still hanging out and fans got mad at the members for like hanging out with Wanho still, which I think is so dumb because they're literally so close. You know, they've been with each other for so long and then it was uh, eventually proven that like it was all fake, but it's just so sad. What were the allegations? He like smoked marijuana when he was like younger like before he debuted or something like that which is like a really big thing in korea oh no there was also an allegation that he borrowed money from someone and he never gave it back or something and all of these rumors were like fake right yeah okay sorry there's a second part of the story where when wanho came back as solo artist he came back with a song called losing you and people think it's a response to find you because in one of the lyrics he's like it's better to lose me than lose you Wanho said it's his way of expressing to the fans but it's also people are saying that oh that's like his response to the song find you dude i have goosebumps yeah so that was a really long story but what do you guys think of it (laughs) so when i first started listening to it i immediately liked it and then i understand korean so i was picking up some of the lyrics and i also think i remember was this a song that you said you watched a music video and you like kind of teared up yeah okay yeah i think i remembered that so i was like okay this is a sad song let me look up the lyrics and then let me watch the music video i watched the music video and it's really sad like the music video is so sad but the thing is when they built that concept it wasn't around the concept that wanho would leave it's just so ironic that it happened because wanho is still in that like he was supposed to promote i thought they deliberately made this music video as a transition for a way for him to leave no it was all really sudden like he suddenly announced that he would leave oh my god i don't know i think it's because right now i'm obviously standing like my own k-pop group and watching that music video and knowing the story behind it i was just imagining if a member were to leave it's so sad and also the song is really good so i genuinely enjoyed the song choice that you sent nice i also very much enjoyed the song I didn't know what it meant. I knew it was sad just from like the sound of it or anything, but I, for the first time, didn't like dive deep into it because I remember dancing. She had a lot to talk about it. And so I was like, oh, let her explain it to me. But when I first heard the song, I literally pictured a whole drama. This is a scene. Let me set the scene. So there's a guy and a girl and then they like, you know, start off liking each other and they like getting to the point where they know that they like each other, but they haven't acknowledged it. But then something happens, a miscommunication or someone ruins their relationship and the song plays and then it's scenes where they see each other at school or whatever, but they don't talk to each other. It's just them walking by and like slow-mo seeing each other and the song is what's playing in the background. That is so random. (laughs) Tell me it doesn't sound like it though. Like this is playing in the background and it's dramatic and slow. (laughs) Yeah, it could definitely be like a love song. But I really like how I guess the concept they did around it wasn't about love. It was more about like the friendship they had within the members. 
No, and I was reading why he left, right? And I think the saddest thing was it was such a controversial topic and he was getting backlash from the fans and just the K-industry in general. He made the decision to leave for the greater good of Monster X. So if he didn't leave, he felt like Monster X's like status in the K-pop industry would shatter. So he withdrew himself, even though those allegations proved to be false later. And I just thought that was so heartbreaking. I know. Yeah. So like, can they reunite now that it's fake? Or right. I really wish they could, but I mean, Swan Ho already debuted as a solo artist, so there's I don't think there's any way. But I think the part that just hurts a lot is like, okay, despite that they're like disbanded, that fans were getting mad at like current members for hanging out with him. I think that's just so dumb, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Maybe when the allegations weren't proven to be false yet, like you were mad at Wanho, but these boys, they really train together. They debut together. Like that's so many years of friendship. You can't expect Ugh. them to just move away from Wanho when he's going in such a tough situation. Yeah, that's the one biggest thing that I don't like about K-industry entertainment is like rumors can ruin your career. It doesn't even have to be true. If it's made to be a big enough deal, game over for you. And that's so unfair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the song that I chose is called Answer by ATs. So what did you guys think of it? So I've listened to it before, but I just forgot about it. So technically, when you asked me to listen to it again, it was like a first listen and I liked it. But I wouldn't say it's like one of my top there for K-pop songs. I think I like some of the other songs better, but it was a good song overall. I was also eh about it. It sounded very chaotic to me, if that makes sense. There's a lot going on in my ears. I think it it reminds me of EDM. And like, I like EDM, you know? She does not. people out there. I do, to some extent. I I listen. I've been to certain concerts, you know? And you had a miserable time. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I do enjoy it if it's good. But this one was a little chaotic to me. But I would say it's a good workout song. I feel like you'd hype up my run while I do it because there's such a good build to it. But I didn't add it to anything. Maybe to my running playlist. I knew it. I think I'm noticing that when it comes to K-pop, I think I like more upbeat songs. So I think that's why I liked it. But there's a guy. His voice is so deep. And um, yeah. If you guys didn't know, Sharon loves deep voices like bassy voices i didn't know that until like we started talking about music really that's literally all you ever talked about you'd be like yum his voice literally listen to it it's so good but i also looked up kind of like the members and stuff do you guys know how old they are they're pretty young they debuted in 2018 the My oldest brothers. is the same year as us born in 1998 so like 22 to 23 the youngest is a 2000 baby so he's like 19. I mean, that's like super normal because they really they debut in 2018 because people usually debut old as like 22, 23. That is insane. Yeah. And there's, yeah, there's seven of them. So the age range is like 19 to 22 ish, I think, which I found is crazy. I mean, so. when, when Jungkook debuted, he was 15. Yeah, Jungkook is a baby. 15 he's 97 yeah. dude that's like so crazy to me because that's his life all he knows is this idol life because 15 is the age where you fully start developing a brain and like conscious and like what you remember in life you sound like pre-15 we're just jelly like we don't know anything. no legit like as a cognitive science major your brain is not fully developed and you kind of have sparse memory until like middle school to high school and their entire middle school to high school experience is idle life like training and stuff like that mm-hmm. like that's crazy how do you know at 15 that you want to be a star i think a lot of trainees like they have this dream to debut but they're also just very passionate about music like want to be a yeah. singer or dancer like these trainees they've been into this type of stuff since they were young yeah um the song that i chose is called homebody by ph1 i just want to say it was so you it's like very chill and the lyrics i didn't look at korean lyrics but the english lyrics which is so you like i don't know if this is exact words but it's like i don't want to see anybody i don't want to talk to anybody i'm homebody <laughs> I'm <a> homebody <laughs> 
Dude, okay, before we talk about the song, I discovered K-pop 2020, PH1, maybe like a month ago, already my top artist, hands down, my favorite, one of my favorite artists, probably top three. Ugh, I love him. The song itself, I liked it. I really liked the chorus and the English parts, but it wasn't like my go-to, mm. but I, I wouldn't mind it if you like played it in the car. So It was um, a Sharon's type. <laughs> Yeah, I, I figured. You know, people cannot enjoy songs but still respect music. And I hate is a strong word, but I really didn't like it. <gasps> Why? I'm sorry. I like the lyrics because, you know, mm-hmm. homebody, but... Not your thing. Not Ugh, my vibe. That's no. like my favorite. Uh, then you would not like PH1 at all. Period. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm obsessed with him and like that... Ugh, I don't I don't even know if I like the song because I like him so much or like I like the song itself but like truly the the lyrics if you know Korean which I don't know Korean but I looked up lyrics it like talks about like oh how he he's a nobody and he just stays home because he's a homebody and stuff like that like I felt that I don't want to well I like meeting people I guess but also I'm a homebody and I just want to have Netflix at home and like be in bed and not do anything and a part of it is like being lazy and stuff and, ugh, I just felt that song that's why when I listened to it, I was like, okay, I could definitely see why Vicky likes this. Like, this is right up her alley. Dude, I love that song. So to wrap up this podcast, we're just going to list out three other artists, two other artists that we feel you would like if you enjoyed our choice of music. Anyone want to kick it off? Okay, well, for me, this one is in a league of its own, but got seven. Mm. <laughs> But I would say, okay, I would say one K-pop and one R&B. So for me, R&B will be Alina Baraz. Love her. Love mm-hmm. airy voices. Like, Sharon loves deep voices. But I love airy. I love airy voices. <laughs> and then for another person that I'm, like, listening to a lot right now is Monster X. Vicky? K-pop-wise, this girl called Jamie, also known as Park Ji-min, oh my god, beautiful voice. She doesn't have that many like singles out because she just re-signed to a new label, but she has a lot of collabs and her voice is iconic. Um, if you like like Beyonce, like Powerhouse Woman, that's your type. And then R&B-wise, a person that I discovered like yesterday is called Queen Naja, N-A-I-J-A. She like just released an album and she's very R&B vibes. She's like her Kalani type of vibes. For me, I think if you're new to K-pop, objectively speaking, I really think BTS is a good intro to it. Another artist I've been enjoying, her name is Jessie, J-E-S-S-I. I think she's R&B. Hip-hop R&B. Hip-hop R&B. And I like her energy. She's like bad B kind of vibes. And then Western music, probably Lauv or Boy in Space. Sweet. So those are our recommendations that we have for you. Please let us know if you like any songs or if you're listening to any song, tag us in your story that you're listening to. And that wraps up our podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.